As we wrap up chapter two on our discussion about graphing in 3D and how vectors can help us with that, I want to address another question that asks, what other coordinate systems do we have for graphing in space? Just like with the rectangular coordinate system in 2D, we had the xy coordinates, but we also had polar coordinates that used a radius and an angle theta with the x-axis. Sometimes the polar system was easier for graphing equations and interpreting situations, and sometimes the rectangular was better. Do we have the same situation with three-dimensional graphing? And the answer is yes. We've got two other coordinate systems that we can use. The first of the two are called cylindrical coordinates. And cylindrical coordinates are kind of like polar coordinates in 3D. With polar coordinates, we had a radius and an angle theta. To make it in 3D, we're just going to add an extra coordinate z that tells us how far vertically the graph point is in that z direction. So let's formalize that here. Let's say it is similar to polar coordinates. which have r theta, a radius and an angle theta. And angle with the x-axis. We're just adding this z, which is the vertical distance. In the plane or in space. So visually, what we're talking about here is we've got our x, y, z axis from rectangular. And instead, what we're going to do is we're going to have some radius that makes some angle theta to a point. And then we go vertically to some point, some distance z. And that vertical z makes a right angle with the radius r. So if we've got this cylindrical coordinate system, let's talk about how we can make conversions between the rectangular system and the cylindrical system. Very similar to polar coordinates, x is equal to r cosine theta, and y is equal to r sine theta. We just have this new coordinate z, which is just the vertical distance, which works the exact same way in both systems. And similarly, if we're going the other way, we know that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared from the Pythagorean theorem and that the tangent of theta is equal to the y distance over the x distance. And again, the z coordinate is just the z coordinate. Now, there is one thing we've got to be careful of in 3 space. With the tangent of theta, we want to make sure that we check the domain as we take the tangent inverse, because on our calculators, tangent inverse is always between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. And sometimes we want to be in the opposite half of the grid. So we have to really think about where our point is. And we'll look at an example of that right now. Let's do some examples where we can use these conversions. Let's say we have the cylindrical point five pi over six four, and we're going to convert it to a rectangular point.
Well, very similar to what we did with polar coordinates, x is equal to the radius of 5. Let's go ahead and label 5 is the radius, pi over 6 is the theta, and 4 is the z. So x is equal to the radius of 5 times the cosine of the angle pi over 6. Y then is the radius of 5 times the sine of the angle pi over 6. And the z coordinate is just what the z coordinate is, which is 4. Simplifying our x and y then, cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. So we end up with 5 root 3 over 2 for the x coordinate. The sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So we end up with 5 halves for the y coordinate. And so our cylindrical point changed to rectangular x, y, z becomes 5 root 3 over 2 comma 5 halves comma 4. And we have our rectangular point that is equivalent to the cylindrical point 5 pi over 6, 4. We can also go the opposite direction. We can take a rectangular point and convert it into a cylindrical. Let's take the rectangular point, negative 8, 5, negative 7, and convert it to a cylindrical point. For the cylindrical point, we now have x, y, and z that we're converting to an r, a theta, and a z. Well, our formula says that r squared is equal to x squared, 64, plus y squared, 25, which is equal to 89. Taking the square root of both sides, the radius must be equal to the square root of 89. Theta comes from the tangent. The tangent of theta is y over x. So we're going to take the tangent inverse of y over x, 5 over negative 8, which is equal to negative, doing it on our calculator, it'll give you negative 0.5586. But here's where we have to be careful with the tangent inverse. If I think about just the x, y plane, z, it's going to be vertically or below this. Looking at the x, y, x is negative 8, y is 5. Our point is going to be above some point in the second quadrant. However, a theta of negative 0.55 is a negative angle. Negative 0.5586 goes the wrong direction. We need to move it so it goes to the correct direction. Well, the distance that we need to move it is halfway around the unit circle. We need to add pi to get to the correct spot. So when we do negative 0.5586 plus pi on our calculator, we'll get approximately 2.583. And that's going to be the number of radians that we want it to open up to get us in the correct quadrant. So again, we want to make sure we're careful. Tangent inverse on our calculator will always stick us on the right half of our xy graph, which means if your point ends up in the left half, you have to add a pi to it to get to the correct place. And a quick sketch can help you see what's happening there. Now with z, z straightforward with these cylindrical points. z is just the z, so negative 7. So we end up with our cylindrical point of the square root of 89 for the radius, 2.583 radians for the angle, and negative 7 for the z value. We've got our rectangular point. We can even switch between equations, equations in rectangular and equations in cylindrical. Let's say we've got the equation that r is equal to 3 sine of theta. And we want to convert that equation to a rectangular equation. 
Well, we know that our sine theta is equal to something. So if we multiply both sides by r, we end up with r squared equals 3r sine theta. And we know from our formulas that r squared is x squared plus y squared. 3 is just a constant. We know that r sine theta is equal to the y coordinate. And so we've converted this to a rectangular equation, x squared plus y squared equals 3y represents the same equation in cylindrical as r equals 3 sine theta. So that's cylindrical coordinates, very, very similar to polar coordinates, which we're already familiar with. But there is a second three-dimensional graphing system that I want to talk about called spherical coordinates. And with spherical coordinates, we end up with three Greek letters for our coordinates, rho, theta, and phi. Rho, theta, and phi. Rho is the distance from the origin to the point. And I want to be careful not to confuse that with the r from the cylindrical coordinates. r was the radius in the xy plane, and then we moved vertically up. Rho is going to be the diagonal distance from the origin to the point, almost like a vector that goes diagonally through space. It's the actual distance to the point, not just in the xy plane, but through space. Theta is the angle with the x-axis. just like we did before. It's the same theta that we saw in the cylindrical coordinates, also from polar coordinates. Theta is the angle with the x-axis. And phi, our new Greek letter, phi is going to be the angle with the z-axis. So visually, what we're talking about here is there's some distance diagonally through space, rho, that comes off of a projection. If it made a right angle, it comes off of an angle theta that's made with the x-axis and an angle phi made with the z-axis. So we end up with two angles and a distance that give us the coordinates to the point. So then the next logical question is, how do we do conversions between the rectangular system that we're more familiar with and this new system, the spherical coordinates? Well, our x-coordinate is equal to rho times the cosine of theta times the sine of phi. Notice the first part looks very similar to what we had with polar coordinates and cylindrical coordinates, the distance times the cosine of the angle. We're just also multiplying by the sine of the, the, the last angle. y is going to be rho sine theta sine phi. And z is rho times the cosine of phi. If we're going the other direction, from the Pythagorean theorem, rho squared is equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared. The Pythagorean theorem in three dimensions, because this time we're going uh, straight to the point instead of just the xy plane. Because theta is the same theta we saw before, it's still tangent of theta is y over x. Just make sure that you check the domain again. And finally, to find phi, we solve the last equation here for phi. z equals rho cosine of phi. Dividing both sides by rho, we get that the cosine of phi 
is equal to z divided by rho. That's usually going to be easier to solve, but it does require us to know rho first. So if we don't know rho, we basically just calculate it. It's the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. But it'll be usually quicker just to do z divided by rho. All right, let's see if we can do some examples where we make these exact conversions. Let's start with taking a spherical point Let's take 2, negative 5 pi over 6, comma pi over 6, and convert that to a rectangular point. Well, we need to know what x, y, and z are in rectangular points. And our conversion formula say it's going to be rho, which is 2. Let's go ahead and label these as rho, theta, and phi times the cosine of the first angle, negative 5 pi over 6, times the sine of the second angle, pi over 6. y is 2 sine of negative 5 pi over 6 times the sine of pi over 6. And z is equal to rho 2 times the cosine of the last angle, just pi over 6. Simplifying these will give us our rectangular point that's equivalent to the spherical point. So we've got 2 times the cosine of negative 5 pi over 6 is negative root 3 over 2. And the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. And that gives us negative root 3 over 2. For the y-coordinate, we have 2 times the sine of negative 5 pi over 6. That's in the third quadrant, so it's negative 1 half. Sine of pi over 6 is still 1 half, and so we end up with negative 1 half for our y-coordinate. And finally, with z, we have 2 times the cosine of pi over 6, which is root 3 over 2, which is just the square root of 3. So our spherical point of 2, negative 5 pi over 6, pi over 6 is the same as the rectangular point, negative root 3 over 2, negative 1 half, square root of 3. Let's try going the other direction. Let's look at the rectangular point. of negative 1, 1, square root of 6. And we're going to convert that to a spherical point. Well, to get spherical, we need to know what rho, theta, and phi are going to equal from our x, y, and z. Well, our rho formula actually says rho squared is equal to the sum of all the squares. So negative 1 squared is 1, plus 1 squared is 1, plus the square root of 6 squared is 6. And so that gives us rho squared is equal to 8. Taking the square root of both sides, rho is equal to the square root of 8, which simplifies to 2 root 2. With theta, theta is equal to the tangent of y over x. So if we do a tangent inverse of y over x, 1 over negative 1, or the tangent inverse of negative 1, uh, negative 1 tangent inverse is going to be pi over negative pi over 4. But again, we need to take a quick look at where this point is going to be. It's a rectangular point of negative 1 comma positive 1. And negative pi over 4 sticks us in the wrong quadrant. So we need to add pi to it. And when we add pi to a negative pi over 4, we're adding 4 pi over 4. We end up with 3 pi 
over 4 is the actual point. For phi, the cosine of phi is equal to z over rho. z is the square root of 6 divided by rho, which we just found out was 2 root 2. And when we simplify that, we're actually doing the cosine inverse dividing by the square root of 2. We get root 3 over 2. And we know the cosine inverse of root 3 over 2 is pi over 6. And so we've ended up with a spherical point that is equal to a rectangular point of negative 1, 1 root 6. That point is 2 root 2, 3 pi over 4, pi over 6. Similar to what we did with the cylindrical coordinates, spherical coordinates can also be expressed as equations, or surfaces can be expressed as equations. Let's do rho equals 5 cosine of phi. We can manipulate these equations to try and convert them into the other form, into rectangular form. And you can see on this one, similar to the other example, if we multiply both sides by rho, we end up with rho squared equals 5 rho cosine of phi. And rho squared, we know from our formulas, is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals the constant of 5. And then rho cosine of phi, that is directly equal to z. And so we end up with the equation x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 5z as being the equivalent equation in spherical coordinates as rho equals 5 cosine of phi. So those are our two new systems we're looking at, spherical coordinates and cylindrical coordinates. Sometimes we might want to make a conversion, though, between these two new systems. And it is a lot of work to have to go to rectangular in the middle. So let's take a look at how we can make a direct translation between the two, how we can convert between our new systems, between spherical and cylindrical coordinates. Well, just as before, we have some conversions. Remember that spherical we just did is expressed as rho theta phi. And cylindrical is what we started with is expressed as a radius theta times a z distance. So if we want to change spherical into cylindrical, our conversion for r is that r is equal to rho times the sine of phi. Theta, I mentioned earlier, is the same theta between both systems. So there's really no conversion needed for that center coordinate. And z is going to be rho times the cosine of phi. If we're going the other direction, we have cylindrical and we want the spherical. Rho squared from the Pythagorean theorem is the radius squared plus z squared. Again, theta is the same theta, so there's no work to do there. We just need to get after the phi, which if we take the z equals equation that we just had and divide both sides by rho, we end up with the cosine of phi is equal to z over rho which usually by this point we will have already calculated rho, so that's easier. But if we haven't calculated rho, we just use our rho equation, and rho is the square root of r squared plus z squared. So let's see if we can do some examples where we convert directly between these new systems of graphing in space, between spherical and cylindrical. Let's do a few examples. Let's take the spherical point first. 
the spherical point to negative 5 pi over 6 and pi over 6. We're going to convert that to cylindrical. Well, for cylindrical, we need to know the radius, the angle theta, and the vertical distance, z. The radius is equal to rho 2 times the sine of the angle pi over 6, the phi, the last angle. Theta is just theta of negative 5 pi over 6. And z is rho 2 times the cosine of phi times the cosine of pi over 6. Simplifying, the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So we end up with a radius of 1. The cosine of pi over 6 is the square root of 3 over 2, which gives us square root of 3. And so we now have our cylindrical point of 1, negative 5 pi over 6, square root of 3, which is equivalent to the spherical point of 2, negative 5 pi over 6, comma pi over 6. Let's do one more example where we go the other direction. Let's take the cylindrical point of the square root of 2, 3 pi over 4, square root of 6, and we're going to convert that to spherical. So because it's a cylindrical point, we've got a radius, a theta, and a z. I didn't label on the spherical. Back then, we had the rho, the theta, and the phi. So for finding the spherical point, we need to know what rho is, what theta is, and what phi is. Our rho equation says that rho squared is equal to the r squared plus the z squared. r squared is 2 plus the z squared is 6, which means rho squared is equal to 8. Taking the square root, rho is the square root of 8, or 2 root 2. Theta is the same in both graphing systems. So we have 3 pi over 4. And for phi, we know the cosine of phi is equal to z over the rho. So we'll do the cosine inverse of z, the square root of 6, over the rho, 2 root 2. And I think we simplified this one before. We have the cosine inverse dividing out the square root of 2 of root 3 over 2. Cosine inverse of root 3 over 2 is pi over 6. And so we've taken our cylindrical point of square root of 2, 3 pi over 4, square root of 6, and we've ended up with the spherical point, 2 root 2, 3 pi over 4, and pi over 6. So that's what we're focusing on today with these new coordinate systems, spherical graphing and cylindrical graphing. Can we convert between all three systems, spherical, cylindrical, and rectangular? I want to wrap up really quick by summarizing the three graphing systems visually in three dimensions. So we'll make our little coordinate plane here. And normally, we label them x, y, and z. But just to make it really clear, I'm going to call this i, j, and k as vectors in the x, y, z direction. When we're graphing with the rectangular system, with the rectangular system, we go a distance x. And then we go a distance y. And then we can vertically go a distance z to our point. 
that is x, y, z. And each turn makes a right angle. That's the rectangular coordinate system. When we do cylindrical, we say instead what we're going to do is we're going to take a radius that stretches out to where we go vertically at z. And that radius is going to make an angle theta with the x-axis. And when we do, we end up with a point that is the radius theta z with the spherical coordinates instead what we're going to do with spherical coordinates is we're going to go directly from the origin to the point and we're going to call that distance rho and that rho is going to be formed with an angle of theta with the x axis it's the same theta as we had with the cylindrical coordinates but also with an angle phi from the z-axis. And in that way, we end up with our point rho theta phi. So we now have three ways to represent that same point in space. And depending on the context, sometimes one context is much easier to work with than the other context. But for now, we're focusing our energy on learning about the three systems, converting between the three systems, and interpreting where those points will be. So take a look at the homework assignment, practice some of those, and we will discuss them more in class.